Hey team, welcome back into the Warrior Holic off the back of a 28 to 16 win over the Tigers. What do you all reckon? Great to get the dub for me. I thought there were some outstanding aspects of the game, but some areas that we seriously need to improve on as the teams we come up against get better over the coming weeks. But two points is two points, onwards and upwards from here. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a different background today. I've got to be honest with you guys, um, with the way work's been going recently, I was kind of questioning whether I'd have the time to go on with the uh, YouTube stuff because it takes me around three to four hours to produce every video. And if I'm going to do it, I want to be consistent and get it out every week. But just with the way work's been going lately, I just haven't been able to justify committing so much time. Um, but having a chat with a few of my followers here um, off on the other channels where we can sort of deem each other, their feedback is they're really keen for me to continue to do this and even give it a go without putting all the graphics up. So I'm going to give this a go today. I'm going to wing it. I'm just going to have it, you know, share my thoughts um, for each of the players without all the graphics and without all of the details and the stats and see what you guys think. If people continue to watch, I'll probably keep doing that. But I'm going to try and keep these things short and brief. And I know with, you know, everyone's busy these days. So no one's got time to sit down and listen to me to talk shit about Warriors for 45 minutes. So let's see how we go. Straight into it with RTS at the back. I'm not sure what you guys reckon, but I thought that was his best game we've seen from him since he came back to the club. For me, he's an outright fullback. Um, he just showed it. He's meant to be there, even though Webby sort of talked about him not quite being up there um, as far as counting numbers go and that sort of thing because he hasn't played there for so long. I just thought he was outstanding. Ran for 300 metres, six tackle breaks, a line break, um, some try savers. Just his effort and his energy and his deception and attack just adds a real layer to our um, overall attack for the team. What does Webby do when um, Chance comes back? potentially this week against the Eels. My feeling is he puts him straight back there and puts RTS on the wing. That said, I think I'm starting to switch to the camp of having RTS at the back there and looking at Chans in the centres. Um, really tough call to make after Webby kind of boxed himself into a hole by saying that Chans was his fullback. I'm not too sure why you know you want to do that and commit to something before you've even seen it work, but um, for me, I'd be sticking with RTS at the back. He, um, close to my man of the match, to be honest, but I ended up giving it to Adam. On the wings, Dallin, his best game for a while as well. Ran for 200 metres, um, eight tackle breaks. Been a long time since we've seen him get up to those sort of numbers with the attack. Generally been sitting around the 130-odd recently, and it's probably an indication on the you know the Tigers' defence. I just felt like Dallin was putting in that second effort. Once he hit the line, he felt that the hands were a little bit loose on him, and he just kept powering forward. And as a result, he kept getting those extra few metres. So well on to him, and good to see him sort of showing the way for the young fellas around him. Ed Cossey on the other side, disappointing to see him drop that ball, but great to get a try, even though he had the ball in the wrong hand. Uh, but overall, his work ethic was good. Um, you know, hits a line hard. Um, probably not quite as as dynamic as Montoya, but I like the fact he pulls off the odd big hit, which really sort of changes the momentum for the team. So overall, an acceptable, um, pretty good performance from him. Ali Lautoa, uh, he just really showed some of the signs of the X factor and the fact that he's going to be a world-class centre going forward. That tip on to set up Ecosi's try, well, that's good. Um, his step, his strength in the tackle, and outstanding to see him defend at um, 100%, 10 tackles, none missed. Um, so definitely a star of the future and I'm glad he came through the game unscathed we just need to see him play some consistent footy MGT he made 21 tackles and just missed two um, ran for 111 meters early as well over the 100 meter mark in fact our whole back five were well over 100 meters um, yeah MGT very solid uh, three errors which is a bit of a shame but overall I thought he was a, you know played a solid game and showed that he's more than capable of playing in first grade and it's the kind of guy I believe will get better and better the more he plays so Curious to see, um, like I said, if Chance comes back in, I wouldn't mind seeing him slot into centre. But if he doesn't and um, RTS goes to the wing, you may see uh, MGT get another shot next week. Or do they move Montoya into the centres? A lot of questions to be answered there. But overall, our back five played outstanding. Um, well done to all of them. Into the halves, I thought Chanel stepped up really well. There would have been a lot of pressure on him after the shit he got last week. Now, some of those abusive fans are kicking the balls. Um, <laughs> his first two kicks he gets the boys scoring in the corner on his wrong side but to his credit he kept his head down and like you see when he started laughing when he's kicking them and they started to go over it's just an alignment thing and a confidence thing so you know glad to see him um, sink a few and just kind of get that um, you know bug off his back overall I thought his game was pretty good um, his, his long kicking and his high kicking was better than the week before more height on his bombs more contestable couple of chips that he put to, through there on like the second or third tackle were a little bit um, questionable for me. But overall, I thought he was pretty solid. Tamati Martin, rocks and diamonds, man. 
there's a lot to like about what he does, but I just don't feel like he's got to that point where he's able to control the whole flow of the game. Um, he's still got that instinct to run himself. Um, a couple of times here last night, I thought, man, if he just popped that ball right at the line we were on their try line, the, you know, the edge back row, I probably would have scored, but he chose to go himself. We just got to get that balance right there, you know, put it into the forwards, put it into the forwards, make sure that the um, opposition have to commit to, to stopping that big edge back row. And then after about two or three of those, then go when they're not expecting it. You might have a little bit more space, but who knows? So with this one, I'm curious. SJ is meant to be back this week for the Eels. If he does come back, what do you guys want to see happen? Tough call for me, but I would really like to see him go into seven and Chanel stay at 5'8". Those two have played a lot of footy together over the years. Um, we haven't seen Tamari and uh, SJ clip that well so far this season. I'd be really curious to see how Chanel would go with the experience of SJ taking a lot of the lion's share of the kicking, and that way you can just let Chanel focus on his running game um, rather than sort of playing 50-50 with the kicks like we're seeing at the moment. Tough on Tamari Martin, I know, but I feel like maybe a couple of weeks in cut might give him a bit more confidence and you know, give him a little, little bit more um, precision to what he's doing. I'm not 100% sure. My instinct, though, says Webby will probably drop Chanel back to 14 and put Tamari at 5-8, um, but only time will tell. It's not long till uh, Team Live Tuesday when we'll hopefully find out. I imagine that Webby will probably put up a smoke storm and have uh, SJ on the extended bench and bring him in at the last minute. Um, who knows, though? Who knows? Uh, on to the Fords, Adam Fanoa Blake, like I said, my man of the match, um, running for 225 metres, 89 metres post contact, two line breaks, a try, six tackle breaks, um, I think it was 20 odd, 21 tackles he made with none missed. Um, I just loved the speed he was hitting that ball with, um, you know, running from 10 metres back and hitting the line full speed, busting a tackle, accelerating through, you know, a massive line break he got. That's what he's capable of. It just gets a little bit frustrating for me when he kind of just starts on a really short run up, takes that little step, and then sort of drives his way through the tackles. But when he takes that run up and hits the ball that hard, I don't think there are many people who can actually stop him first up. So I hope that continues, brother. Great to see that attitude. Uh, on the other side, Mitch Barnett, well up over 100 metres again. Awesome effort. Um, I think he's a really good leader. I like him at captain. He spoke really well after the game. He can be a little bit pessimistic at times because he's got massively high expectations, but I like that. He's not easily impressed. He, like, he's always wanting more from the boys. He's constantly grown and delivered more from himself every week that he's been at the club. So well done to him again. Wade Egan, man, he concerns me three times hitting the head. Um, heads on hips and face to face. Got to work on that technique, man. You've got a long life ahead of you. I really don't want to see you suffering from that bloody what is it cte brain disease or whatever man got to get that tackling sorted chatting with one of the guys on um, instagram about this one i wonder if it's the fact that he's a meter 85 he's a tall hooker that maybe struggles to get down lower around the legs like you see from the shorter guys like api corathel who's got a really um, good low chopping tackle um, not too sure interesting thing about this game was how the um, tigers were jumping out a dummy half and slapping at his arm um, because he does like to take that one step before he passes at time to engage the line to kind of create a bit of deception. Almost got the ball knocked out a number of times, and I think that sort of disrupted our flow a little bit. And we saw he's a little bit slow to get down to the ball, and um, Papali'i was able to dive on it. So not his greatest game ever, but again, another solid effort from that fella. On to the edges, I thought Maratania could have had another really solid game. It's got to find a way to get him to put in that little bit of a step to get on an outside shoulder um, on attack. He seems to run straight at the man. I mean, as strong as he is, you know, when you've got big back rowers and, you know, standing in front of you, you've got to go for the gaps. Um, so something to work on for him, but I do really enjoy his aggression, um, his power. He he draws in a lot of defenders, so if he can get an offload going, at some point he will create havoc. Um, Kirk Capewell, I think he's continued to step up. Um, a, probably because the ribs have got better, but B, growing sort of a second leg after that um, time in origin camp would have given him a lot of confidence. Running up for 97 metres again, so over 100 metres last week. Um, that's good to see. He was down sort of 60 or 70 metres at times before origin. But just his ability to kind of break the tackle, spin, um, get those line breaks is something we didn't see earlier in the season. Such a shame he tried to roll that ball back uh, after that line break. But hey, that's how shit happens. Um, but yeah, he's definitely stepped up and justified his starting position at the moment. I think he'll continue to hold that on and has silenced a lot of critics, probably me, one of them, for a little period there. Dylan Walker, man, um, 163 running metres he got in 71 minutes. So he definitely gets through a similar workload to Tolby Harris, but 
something wasn't quite clicking with him and in our attacking um, structure right on their line. I felt like he was standing a little bit deep and taking the ball a little bit flat-footed, maybe had the ball in the hand just a little bit too long and sort of gave the opposition a chance to get up and disrupt us a little. I'm not sure. I'm no expert in that position, but it just something didn't feel like it was quite clicking there. Um, again, he's only been in there full-time for a couple of weeks now. He's got you know new guys in Tamati Martin and Chanel around him and RTS at fullback there, so it's a kind of disrupted spine, so we can't be too critical, but I feel like that was one of our biggest weaknesses is our ability to get that clinical shape going in the opposition's 20. I feel like that was one of our biggest weaknesses last night was being able to sort of, you know, execute in the opposition's 20. We should have been, you know, five tries up by half time, given all the possession we've had. And I really felt, you know, I joked about it being a 50 point win to us. We just let too many of those opportunities get away. Not all on him, obviously, but uh, yeah, something not quite clicking with that spine. Onto the bench, Freddie Lusick getting a few more minutes this week. I thought he was serviceable. His pass was a lot crisper than it was earlier in the season. Um, didn't really do anything to stand out, but didn't really do anything bad. So he was, you know, more than acceptable there. Um, what was really odd for me is like Jazz only getting 18 minutes. He had a big impact, um, particularly on defense, his line speed and his ability to chop down their big props and stuff, drop them on the on a dime. Yep, 17 minutes and they brought him straight off. Maybe it was a, um, an indication that we weren't quite getting the same momentum without AFB out there on attack, I don't know. Leka Halasima, nine minutes, didn't get one run. Man, I was so amped to see him get out there and really put on a couple of those big runs get the Mount Smart faithful fired up, but didn't happen. I have no idea why he came off. Don't know whether he was injured, wasn't well. I hope he's all good to go, though. Um, bit of a concern. Jackson Ford, not too bad. Um, you know, it was a bit weird with his knee. Um, he seemed to be running okay initially when he was out there, but I went back and watched um, the bit where his knee collapsed underneath him, and I saw that he'd been limping for about two or three sets before that, but didn't have enough time to go all the way back and find out how he did it initially. But it's just odd. Um, just <laughs> running up in the line and his, his knee just collapsed out from underneath him hand went straight up and wanted to go off um, but he was up singing the team song with no icing or no bracing or anything on after the game so hopefully it's a sign maybe it's just a bit of a hyperextension or something that will heal up pretty quick um, if he's unable to play that could mean Dimitrix if Akula comes back into the mix next week which I'm really excited about massive body, super athletic um, brings a completely different kind of attitude um, than Jackson Jackson's played every game so far this season, so he'll be starting to feel a bit of fatigue, so it might be interesting to see a bit of young blood come in there. That said, get well soon, brother. I hope it's nothing too serious. You know, continued to be industrious last night, a lot of tackles, tried hard on um, on attack. I'm still not convinced he's big enough or explosive enough to play through the middle. Maybe they sort of change his physique a little over the offseason there. So overall, um, things I liked is our ability to penetrate through the middle and get full momentum off the back of our back five with huge meters and then AFB and Mitch Barnett, um, Dylan Walker, um, outstanding. Uh, good, better kicking game or deep kicking game, more contestable kicks, but it's just our lack of ability to execute um, those silly little errors. I felt like we um, got a little bit of rough into the, the stick from the referee as when it comes to six of gains and ruck infringements. He was pretty strict on us. We ended up, I think, with four more six of gains against us than the um, the Tigers gave up, but similar amount of penalties. We had 10 errors, which, I don't know, I always like to be in the single figures, but they did tend to hurt us at the wrong time. Um, we had 25 of 21 missed tackles and um, about 40-odd for the Tigers. So there was a lot we did better than them, but it's the Tigers, a salad doing us. We should have smashed them. They've conceded 40 points most weeks recently to only concede 25 to us. I probably feel like that's a win with all those young players out there. So we're going to have to step it up against the Eels and take it to another level and really get up into some you know, better form before we start hitting these top eight teams that we've got to um, get wins over to make them drop down and hopefully we can get up over them at the moment. You know, we're three points out of the eight. Still a long way to go with six rounds ahead of us, but we've got the bye in the last round, so we've got to do the damage every week before then. Right, yeah, that'll do me for this week. Let me know who your man of the match was, what disappointed you, what were you happiest about, and what are you looking forward to on Teamless Tuesday? Up the mighty New Zealand Warriors, that's one down, five more to go. Let's get it.